Hey friends, thanks for joining me, James Baroud, to hear a few insights from small business experts who support our innovation ecosystem. Today, we'll hear from Reva Lazonsky, Brian Moran, Rena Shanawani, and Tendai Endoro. Rena, we'll start with you and then we'll, we'll go on down. Go ahead. I'm Rena Shanawani. I'm the executive director of the Women's Center for Entrepreneurship. We are an SBA resource partner and we help small, namely micro businesses to start and grow by providing as much technical support as we possibly can. Great, thank you. A little more, Renda. That was, that was too short. Tuesday. Okay, you want more than the elevator pitch. During Corona, we actually were really lucky that the SBA gave us enormous grant. We were able to expand all of our services and provide everything free of charge. So, and what I'm really begging and pleading with all of our clients and the entire community is that if whatever it is that we can do to help, please let us know. If there is information out there that you would like us to research, we can try. If there are classes that you would like us to get, if you know of instructors that are rock star instructors, we'll hire them and we'll give those classes. And they will also do one-on-one -on -one counseling with you. So anything that you need during COVID where we can help in a technical way with you, we're here to help. Wonderful, thank you, Rena. All right, we're, we're same with the R's. Reva, go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. So I'm Reva Lasonsky. I am the CEO of Growbiz Media. Our website is smallbizdaily.com. I'm also the editor of uh, Brian's sites, Small Biz Edge. Um, I have a podcast with Brian. You'll meet Brian in a minute. So if you want to hear our podcast, it's revenbrian.com. I have had my business. We are, we are a content producer um, and our website, smallbizdaily.com, for a little over 12 years. And before that, for 20-something years, I was the um, editorial director at Entrepreneur Magazine. So I've spent like basically most of my adult life um, working for, with, and advocating for entrepreneurs and small business owners. Great. Thank you, Reva. And you were coming from uh, California? Orange County, California, where the sun is always out in the summer. <laughs> Great. Thank you. And good morning to you. I know it's a little earlier there. All right, yeah. Brian, go ahead. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Brian Moran. I'm a CEO of Brian Moran and Associates and uh, founder of Small Business Edge, which Reva meant for small business owners and entrepreneurs. I like to say we help you have a better night's sleep by tackling, helping you tackle the most important and biggest obstacles that stand in your way to success. Um, I spent a little, probably about 23, 24 years in the publishing world. I was at the Wall Street Journal, Inc. I worked with Reaver for, I think, four or five years at Entrepreneur. Um, I also have my own publishing company, um, and we published, among other things, the SBA's national magazine called Small Business Success, and Reba was my editor for that. We did that for, I think, about nine years, right? Yeah. Reba? yeah that was yeah. a great run. And so we've done a lot of work with SBA, uh, SBDCs, SCORE. Um, Reva and I got an award together from SCORE yes. one year. Uh, and ICIC, which is the Initiative for Competitive Inner Cities. I did a lot of work with them over the years. So it's been great. I feel like helping small business owners is in my DNA. And nothing makes me happier than helping somebody realize their dream. Thank you, Brian. Okay, Tendai? Okay, thank you very much. My name is Dr. Tendai Ndoro. I am the Regional Director for the Rutgers uh, Newark Small Business Development Center, in fact, uh, the SBDC program uh, Brian just mentioned and um, Rana also just mentioned is an, uh, an SBA resource partner. And we are based at universities. And here in New Jersey, the New Jersey Small Business Development Centers has got 12 centers. And I'm responsible for the one that covers Essex County. And uh, it's been, uh, with the pandemic, it's been an, a very... Uh, um, challenging. We've been busy and um, we do provide consulting, counseling, mentoring, coaching, as well as training to small businesses 
we have received uh, funding from the SBA to help small businesses. So if anyone is seeking help and they're in New Jersey or in, S in Essex County, please do contact us um, and we can reach out to you. We have been helping a lot of businesses uh, with a lot of strategies in addition to applying for the PPP, PPP as well as the uh, idle grants, as well as some of the state grants. A lot of that money is closed down now, but we are always looking out to see uh, new uh, op uh, funding opportunities or, uh, that are coming out during this pandemic. So if you're in our database, you're going to get that information. I'm also a, uh, an entrepreneur. I have uh, three global businesses. And, uh, and so I have experienced um, a downturn in one of my businesses. We have lost about 80%. Uh, it's a hospitality business. We have lost 80% because summer is usually our best uh, time of the season. And we, we were closed for about three months. And then it's just been a slow, slow, slow um, process. But um, we are trying to be resilient. Uh, so that's where, that's where I am. It's both as a support and provider to help other businesses, but also, you know, experiencing exactly what you as small businesses are also experiencing. I'm going through it as well. Well, that's a perfect segue, Tendai. Um, I, first of all, thank you for coming together again. This is an amazing um, panel of experts. So tell us, what are you seeing on the ground? Clearly, the things don't look so good, but I'm sure there's some glimmers of hope. So tell us, uh, let's go back to you, Rena, and give us a sort of a snapshot of what you're seeing as far as how this um, downturn, this pandemic is affecting businesses in, in your arena. So the first three months of the coronavirus from March all the way through very recently, our offices were flooded with phone calls trying to get them to get assistance on how to apply for the PPP because that information was, wasn't very readily available to people. The application was confusing. The supporting documentation was very confusing. And I feel like that was the first wave and now that that, as Tendai mentioned, all of that settled down, now the next wave has, is coming in as people really do want help. People do want to pivot. There is an anguish there. There is, so there is a panic. People are trying to stay afloat. As you know, one-third of small businesses across the country are, claim that they are going to close permanently, which I think is absolutely tragic. And I think will have a, a horrible impact on just the fabric of our society if the whole country gets taken over by these giant corporations, these which were already taking over with the digitization of of businesses. And so we're trying our best to make sure that whatever the small the small starfish that we can throw back into the ocean, the small businesses that we can help, we're trying to do our best to keep them afloat. We're holding sessions, I think, almost every day with various classes. We're trying to uh, just do brainstorming sessions on how to pivot, how to, how to digitize, how to continue to stay relevant in their communities and just keep them afloat for as long as possible. Okay, great. Thank you, Rena. How about you, Riva? Well, I, you know, you've known me a long time, Jim. Um, I'm usually an optimistic person. Uh, I don't have a lot of optimism. I think Ren is right that there's going to be a lot of businesses that are not going to be able to survive um, through this because we don't know where it ends. We have every state has a different uh, regulation. And within that state, um, every, every county has, has different regulations. So some businesses can be open, some can be closed, and we don't know as we go forward into fall what's going to happen with the virus. So if certain businesses, like Rena kept saying about pivoting, if you are um, a retailer, you, hopefully you've been selling online. Hopefully you 
took, you know, you, you took whatever you were selling in your brick and mortar store and are now selling it e-commerce. That's an easier transition to make, though it's a whole new set of skills to learn, right? You have to learn how to promote your online business, how to, you know, stand out in that sea of like, tremendous numbers of businesses and compete with the big guys, you know, compete with the Amazons and, and Walmarts of the world. So that's one, one part of it. If you are um, a service entrepreneur, there's some that I know have been able to, um, had to been able to uh, transport my a friend of mine is um, a, a therapist. I mean, that that's, that's her business. And she has totally transformed to, um, online. She does all her therapy sessions over the computer. And she said it was awkward at first, but now everybody's used to it and they get it. And a lot of people actually like it more. She said, nobody has to get in their car to come to her office. They're more comfortable in their own surroundings. So she feels like she's getting a better result for her business. But other businesses like restaurants and things like that, it's a, you can add takeout, you can do curbside pickup, but that's not going to make up for, um, you know, in-person people coming. So it's, it's a tough time. And I wish I had the, hey, the sun's coming out, you know, that Annie philosophy, which used to be me. And um, I just don't, I just don't. Okay. Well, that's, you know, a fair assessment. Absolutely. You guys are seeing it all. So that's the reality. Let's, we, we shouldn't sugarcoat these things. Brian, go ahead. Tell us what you're seeing. So um, we're, we're in phase two of this pandemic. Phase one was kind of the, we got, everybody got knocked down, right? That was April, May, June, and, and even into July. And as, as Rena pointed out, you know, lots of phone calls, not knowing when is it going to end, and, um, and, and people went into panic mode. And now, now I think we're in phase two, which is kind of the next normal. And, and I, I relate this to the Stockdale Paradox, which I will read. That's my little um, uh, poem or proverb at the end. But, but, you know, the Stockdale Paradox is, and, I, and I'll read it to you now, so I'll read it again at the end. But it's, you know, <laughs> and I have it written right on my wall. You must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end with the discipline that you need to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they may be. And that's where we are right now. We don't know when this pandemic is going to end. So what do we do? I mean, we need to be very tactical about this. Reeve and I talk a lot about creating GPS plans. Uh, G yeah, GPS plans, where it's, where does the next 30 days, where do you want to be at the end of August? Where do you want to be at the end of September and October? You can't look to the end of the year and say, this is where I want to be. I mean, you can try, but the fact is these are uncharted waters. Right. We don't know what if there's going to be another downturn. So you have to plan accordingly. OK, if, if there's no downturn and we continue to the recovery, here's what we're going to do. If there is a downturn, here's how we're going to pivot our business so that when something bad does happen, you've already kind of prepared for it. That's what I'm telling my listeners, my readers, my followers, my clients is that, um, you know, the, the now more than ever, you need to have a plan, you need to follow that plan, but you also need to have a backup plan. Um, the, the successful business owners, that's what they're doing. You know, the ones that put all their eggs into that one basket of getting a PPP loan or an EIDL loan, um, or they thought that the pandemic might end after 30 or 60 days, they're the ones, unfortunately, that went out of business because they didn't, they didn't have a, a backup plan. And they just threw their arms up and they said, no one's gonna help me. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna go out of business. And that's the harsh reality. So right, right now, and that's where we are. We're dealing in harsh realities right now, but mm -hmm. let's help the people. And, and there are fantastic resources right on this panel, right here, right in the in the state of New Jersey, and that's in every state. Tendai and Rena, I mean, they, if you're not reaching out to them and asking them for help right. and assistance, again, what what are you thinking? Like that, those are phone calls you need to make right after this discussion is over. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Brian. Okay, Tendai. Speaking of support from the, from the state. <laughs> 
<laughs> Go well, ahead. Now, uh, we, I know you mentioned Tendai about your own business. We, we feel horrible about that, but clearly you have yeah. really keen so, insight into that. Go ahead. So like uh, phase one, we saw a lot of, uh, you know, we had to also pivot as an organization because we were getting a lot of calls from clients and, um, and sometimes we were, we were actually being proactive calling the clients and we realized we had to bring our emotional intelligence to work as well because not only were we trying to counsel them about their businesses when we reach out or if they reached out to, but they were dealing with other emotional issues. Either they had symptoms or they have a family member was sick or a, a, you know, it was in the family. So this pandemic has affected people. So we had to kind of uh, become uh, counselors of, of their, what they're actually going on while they're also trying to deal with keeping their businesses and refocusing and thinking of how we are going to do. And then we can't, I, in, in our center, we did a, 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 a needs assessment um, a review and we sent out a research and three things came up really clearly. Uh, businesses were positive. And I think because we've been through a, 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 a crisis before with SEND in 2012, people kind of had put some strategies in place. But this is a new kind of crisis that nobody has ever experienced because it was affect, it's affecting people in so many ways. So, but they were still positive about their businesses. But two major concerns was how long, uh, the not knowing how long the pandemic is going to last was a big issue and how long the economy would be shut down. And this was while we were shut down in June. Uh, and then... Uh, what we are finding now is, and, and, how, and whether they can hold on to their employees as well as their businesses, that was a major issue. And then accessing the financial assistance that came out, like Rana mentioned, it was a lot of uh, trying to help people get in. But one of the things that we found out were a lot of businesses uh, didn't have their um, documentation infrastructure in place, which is something that we are working on now in order to apply and access the, the, the financial assistance. So there were a lot of disparities in terms of who got the money when they needed it to hold on to their employees. And some got the money later when they've had to leave and let go their, um, their employees. So our strategies have been really focused on four areas and maybe I can segue into that and just mention that one of the things that we've been telling uh, my, with my team of consultants is tell small businesses revenue retrenchment hold on to as much money cash flow uh, as you can this is not the time to buy that big equipment that you were planning to buy you gotta change and postpone that because you're gonna need your working capital because we don't know how long this is going going to last. And then the second thing is operations. Try to implement as many low touch solutions as you can, because you're now working virtually and you have to look at what is, um, what is worth investing your energy and your time and your employees in order to continue generating that revenue, because that was also a major concern. And then, the, and then that with the digital and the virtual brings with it cybersecurity issues. Are you aware? Are you proactive? What are you doing? And we are offering all these um, seminars about you know, being in a digital space and being aware of the cybersecurity and ransomware that comes with that kind of environment. And lastly, communicate. Communicate, communicate, communicate with your employees. Uh, and with your, uh, with your customers. And one of the things that we are now focusing on with August now is uh, make sure that not only are you training your employees and you've got a lot of times we've got policies on the books, but nobody's practicing. So monitoring and evaluating that what you have, um, what you have put in place is working so that we are pre preventing reinfections and more people spreading uh, the virus and, and also making sure that when customers or clients, are, if you have a physical space or you have an outdoor restaurant, they are not infecting, reinfecting other people 
would do, and be mindful of that. So it, it takes a lot of uh, a consciousness from a small business to rethink and be mindful of what's actually going on all the time. It's no longer as, as needed, but now you have to do it all the time in order to make sure those practice, those policies are, are staying in practice. Well, that, that's a, those are great tips, um, Tenda. Thank you. And that segues into my question, which was going to be and is, you know, what are those strategies that, are, that you're seeing uh, being successful for entrepreneurs? And as I ask that, I'm just going to remind folks that feel free to submit questions through the Q&A prompt on the bottom. So why don't we go back to Rena and, and, and see what she's seeing, what's, what's working, so that maybe we can... Um, you know, share those insights with uh, entrepreneurs who, who might not have found uh, success. Reva mentioned it earlier. It's imperative that everyone goes virtual and start to di starts to digitize their business. We were already seeing the death of brick and mortar businesses before, but now it's really just accelerated by you know, astronomical levels. So I know that's really uncomfortable for a lot of business owners to go digital. It's very out of their comfort zone. They're not familiar with it. If you have a, a local uh, retail shop and you've never done something like this before, I would say first step, and this goes to the, one of the next questions is resources. First start off with all of your free nonprofits that are out there. Get the technical support first. Don't pay for it. So there's, you know, if you go to sba.gov and you search for all the different organizations that are out there, there'll be a dozen within probably within a 50 mile radius of you and you qualify for assistance from that and you can just start exploring it. And if that, once you have a plan and you want to go digital, try doing it yourself. Everything has become so user friendly and if you just invested a few minutes every day to start building your website and going digital, it could be done quickly. And if still it's so uncomfortable, I would definitely outsource that. And I know that's for the micro entrepreneur who really doesn't have a lot to work with. Uh, there are some, some websites now where you can hire people for very minimal amounts of money. We always, we, we try not to recommend specific ones, but what we've heard are Upwork and Fiverr and, you can start hiring people with really tiny, tiny baby steps, baby contracts to start building things for you. You will have to put in a little bit of money. I know people, especially micro entrepreneurs, they really try hard to do it themselves. But that's the first strategy that I would highly recommend. I don't think anyone has a choice if they want to stay afloat. Okay. Thank you for that, Rena. Arriva? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it is. You have to go digital, not only in your business, but in your marketing approach and everything else. And it actually is a, a less expensive way to go. But in, um, I'm in the midst of um, everything has changed, right? So normally every, uh, the, right after Labor Day, the SBDCs have their annual conference. And I always put my presentation together of hot businesses. So normally it's, it's pretty fun and easy. You can slot it in. And, and this year I spent a lot of time staring at my computer because how do I know? I don't know. It, you, you go to all the places who say this is going to be hot next year and no, nobody knows. So what I've looked at is um, industries that seem to be um, doing very well throughout the pandemic because they're catering to the new needs of consumers. And I think this is if you're looking to pivot, may, you might be able to pivot in your existing business, or you may have to close that down and start a different kind of business. So look at the things that are very um, in demand these days. One of the industries that's doing really well for some reason, even though most of us aren't leaving the house is the beauty business. So there's, a, but it's an emphasis on skincare. So there's a lot, and it's a, I always thought that's a pretty good business for entrepreneurs um, who want to get bought out by, you know, like big, big conglomerate companies. Um, another business that's doing really well is stress relief. And that takes many forms. I found this one really great thing that talked about baking is a really good way to, relieve stress. And so one of the ways that I know some uh, businesses here have pivoted here in, in Orange County, and I think this is all over the 
uh, all over the country, restaurants, right? Restaurants weren't able to have people come in and eat. And in my county, you still can't eat inside. I think you're allowed to eat on patios. So, and on the other hand, as I just said, there were a lot of people at home baking. So there was, if you went to the grocery store, apparently I am not a baker, so I can't attest to this personally, there was no flour left because everybody was buying the flour. So some restaurants here, because they had flour in barrels, actually repackaged it and started selling baking kits. So you could not only take out you know, a meal, you could take, you could buy from them a baking kit that they would either deliver or you could do curbside pickup. And it was, you know, some flour and maybe some spices. And it was this one restaurant locally did like $40 packages of baking kits. So think about that. Think about how you can do, take what you do and just do it a little bit differently. You know, just like, okay, I do this, but now maybe I can sell this. And Think about as you're going through this, how you can, is this uh, a temporary fix or can you incorporate this into your regular business model? So if we come out of this, if you come out of this semi intact, you now have a new revenue channel permanently and you'll be able to maybe even earn back money faster um, when the pandemic is over because you'll have more money from more channels coming in. So you just have to be really creative. And I want to say that we are very lucky that the government provides as many free resources. So if you, the SBDCs, when we first started our business, we knew zero about SEO, search engine optimization. We went to our local SBDC and we learned a lot. So go to your SBDCs, your women, your women centers, you score counselors. It's all so much free advice and help and caring to help you get through. Great. Thanks for that. Now, Brian, I don't know how you're going to squeeze more insights in because they covered a lot of territory. <laughs> well, I, I want to personally say that I really up my baking game uh, at home. <laughs> I am like a master baker. And as you can see, the skincare, I've nailed that in the last <laughs> night. I no longer have a face for radio thanks to my attention to skincare. So what are you then, baking? the pandemic has been kind to me in, in that sense. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to, my, my advice is all about accountability and that's where, you know, score uh, SBDCs, women's centers, uh, local chambers of commerce, you know, you, if you don't have a board of advisors or people who are looking at your business with you now, shame on you. That, that's stupid. I, that's what I would tell you. I would say you cannot make these decisions on your own in a vacuum, trying to figure out what the future might hold for you, right? Listen, September, September, on September 1st, we have 122 days left in the year. How are you going to hit your goals in those 122 days? Tell me what changes we can expect. Are we going to have Black Friday or the store is going to be shut down? Will there be Small Business Saturday? You know, what are the holidays going to look like if you can't get access to your inventory because things have been shut down? Because instead of a V curve or even a U curve, we had a W curve. And all of a sudden, right at the worst time, all our supply chains got cut off. You need to play the what if game. See, so there's the stick and the carrot, right? The carrot is, oh, if you do this, all great things will happen, right? I'm the stick. I'm the guy who says to you, if you don't get, hold yourself accountable and you don't get your act together, you will be out of business. I promise you that. And that is going to be tragic. So play the what if game. What if there is another downturn in the economy and the stores close and the pandemic gets worse. How is your business going to survive? What if you don't have access to your supply chains and your inventory? What if, should you be now, should you be telling your customers, start buying your, start thinking about the holidays in September and October? Because in case in November, December, you can't get the things that you want for the holidays, you have them now. Again, there are 122 days starting on September 1st. You need to be accountable every single day if you want to be in business and you want to come close to hitting your goals 
on December 31st. And if you don't do it, if you don't take advantage of the free resources that are in front of you, and you put your head in the sand, and you're not paying attention to the economic indicators, I can tell you with almost certainty about where you're going to be on December 31st, and you're not going to like it. So there you go. I'm the doom and gloom. I'm the seven days of rain. <laughs> it just hit you right across the back of the head. And that that's that's important to do. We, we need to you know we need some straight talk, right? And I like how you reminded people to have their advisory board. We should all be seeking external help, uh, especially now. Uh, and there's more than enough people, resources that will be willing to help. You just need to take the time to pull those people together. Uh, whether it's through Zoom chats or at, especially at this point. I mean, but there's so many reasons. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, I, but you, yeah. so the, the point about the board of advisors and playing the what if game. So what if cash flow becomes tight? You only get to see like kind of what's in front of you as a business owner. You don't see everything. It's like you have the blinders on. You don't see everything behind you. But your advisor, your SBDC counselor, your women's center counselor, they see things that you won't see. So your accountant, your attorney, your business coach, whoever it is that advises you, you absolutely must meet with them at least once a week and have a plan, have a, have a, literally have a GPS plan that says, here's where I want to be at the end of next week, at the end of the month because that's what's going to hold you accountable. And that's, when, that's what's going to keep you as close to hitting your goals as possible. But it won't, because if you go off track now, it's, it's going to be very expensive and very painful for your business. Um, to add some levity, uh, Renna asked what you're, what you're cooking. What are you baking? That's the most important thing. There you go. So I have to tell you, I, and, and as anybody who knows me, I love pizza. So I have been experimenting with these different pizza kits that the, the uh, you know, pizza places were selling. And, and then my local deli sells. So I actually get, a, I, I, I get them from two different places and I combine them because one place has the absolute best pizza sauce I've ever had in my life. And the other one makes this incredible dough. So we, we have make your own pizzas. Usually we do it on Friday night. We have Taco Tuesday. Uh, you know, we, we have all the different days now, but the pizza night on Friday night. It, and I'll send you pictures, Jim. I've really kind of mastered it now. <laughs> I, think I, I think I found my day job. It's a new career. <laughs> oh yes. my God. I, applaud you, I applaud you, Brian, for shopping local at the Micro yes. Entrepreneurs. That's fabulous. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All day. I, I love, I love, and I'll tell you, Italian Time Pizza in Waldwick, New Jersey, went out of business. And that was, as Reva knows, my favorite place to go. Because I used to go in and we would commiserate about the New York Mets. And we would talk and I'd have a slice at the counter while I was waiting for my pizza. And then one day I went over there and they were gone. And they had, they, they had closed their business probably about three months ago. And it just was a slap in the face about what's happening. And and. That's it. We do have to shop local. Keep your money local yes. and support your local business owners. They will, they will love you for it. Yeah. So, um, so what about strategies as far as you've all been saying go digital. We get that, right? But what about strategies of selling things online? You know, we've seen in the news that Walmart is partnering with Spotify to have more small businesses engaged through Spotify. Of course, Amazon has their platform. There are other platforms. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on, you know, those types of platform, in addition to your own website, having your own e-commerce sort of uh, engine, if possible, what are some other uh, platforms or opportunities or options for small businesses to take advantage of? Um, actually, um, one of my businesses is a product-based business and we are on Amazon, but we are also on Teesprings because we do T-shirts, hoodies, and leggings. And we are in the center actually teaching a lot of courses about, you know, e-commerce platforms because it takes a process. Everything in business, if you want to redirect your business model to a certain, uh, it's an infrastructure and you're turning around your business model, 
uh, it's not as easy as it appears just to go on Amazon and start selling. There are a lot of things that you have to do in, before you can actually maximize your business or on an e-commerce platform. And even if you do the campaigns, one of the things that we've been finding is, uh, yes, you still need to have that web presence. You still need to have social media present. It's about the consistency. You can do the campaigns. Some platforms allow you to actually build campaigns like Amazon. Like You can do the campaigns within the platforms, but you can also use other platforms on social media like Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest. But it doesn't automatically convert into, uh, you know, into sales overnight, number one. Number two, you have to have your brand. If you, are, if you have your own brand, you have to have your brand registered for, for others. So that means you now have to deal with the uh, United uh, States Patent Office to register your brand so that you other um, um, uh, attributes. On, the, on, the, on this e-commerce platform open up for you. So we are giving people the, you know, the, the classes about you know, going, doing a private level. Um, if you have products, how can you diversify uh, those products with complementary products and have private labels on them? And you can continue making money because the thing is you want to continue making money. And if a product that you are doing now is not moving, look for other complementary products or services. If you were in services, how can you pivot those services and look for um, a product that complements your services so that you are diversifying your revenue streams in the business? But it takes an e-commerce platform that's well made for you to do it. But do not give up. One of the things that I find a lot of businesses, and there's a whole uh, back office supply chain infrastructure associated with those uh, e-commerce platforms. Yeah. But the thing is, right now with the situation that we are in, and I can tell people, I grew up in a war zone. Give yourself 12 to 18 months. We are, not, we are just at the beginning of this process. And it's so easy to think everything in short-term um, uh, perspective. I'm telling my businesses realistically, think whatever you're doing, think of how it's going to hit your target or how it's going to come to fruition or how it's going to help you. You might get immediate gains because you put it in play, but to really benefit from your effort, give yourself 12 to 18 months, if not 24 months. And those are the businesses that are going to survive. So it's easy to talk about, oh, I can go on eBay, or I can go on, on, on Amazon, or I can go. There's a whole back office that you need to have. And like Rana said earlier, learn to use uh, the experts. It will actually cost you less to pay upfront for using someone with the expertise in it than to try and do it yourself and then turn around and realize you're not getting the, the outcomes that you want three, six months later when you could have just started doing it right correctly by investing in the professional uh, development help that you require. Thank you. Anyone else? So can I, um, one of the things if you do are selling products is if you haven't yet, diversify your supply chain now. A lot of businesses were caught flat because they got all their products from China and China was the first place to shut down. So all of a sudden there was no products to have. So mm -hmm. what you need to do is have several sources of supply overseas and at least one or two here in the US. So in case there's a transportation problem, you can get easy access to goods. That's really, really important. It's not as hard as it sounds. There's a lot of places out there that could connect you. Alibaba um, is one where you can find, and, and Alibaba actually starting several months ago, went and took their original model, which was connecting business owners around the world with mostly uh, manufacturers in China and said, no, we want to connect you with manufacturers in America too. So there's a mm -hmm. lot of um, 
there's a lot of sources. Just go on there and check and see, make sure you get references to make sure you have a diverse supply chain of at least five or different different suppliers because there's nothing worse where you, let's say you've built up some momentum, people are coming to your website and buying stuff and all of a sudden you have nothing to sell them. So that's really key. It's as, almost as important as anything else you're doing is to make sure you can have a steady source of supplies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, 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 great. And Anyone yeah. else? Bring. And we are offering courses on how to pre-qualify suppliers because there are also a lot of scams yeah. going on, people sending money and nobody. So we have been looking to see the little, uh, the areas where, how do you do a private level? But when you're doing a private level, how do you pre-qualify? Because we just got a lot of calls from people saying, we were trying to buy PPE and we send money and it never arrived or it never came because they, it, they were reacting. It was, a, you know, like, let's do it. So we are teaching people, how do you qualify? What are the legitimate? And this is what you look for. You can go on a platform like Global, supply, global Sourcing and you can get uh, uh, suppliers from everywhere. But you have to look at certain things to see, is this a business just pivoting to make money and saying they are now providing this product or have they actually been doing it? You mentioned River uh, Alibaba. There are people who are gold suppliers, which means they are verified. And then there are all these middle people. Same thing on Amazon. There are all these middle people. So you have to know who is the actual manufacturer and who is just a, 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 a middle person pushing product that may or may not come. And so you need to know how to pre-qualify all those um, uh, suppliers as well to make sure that you're not losing money while you're trying to make money. That's really good advice. I, I've heard some, so many scams, particularly with the, the you know, PPE stuff. Um, it's, it's a shame. It's a real shame. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we have some, we have a question below, but before we get the questions, I just wanted to do a quick lightning round of, you know, share just one thing with uh, our audience uh, about what they should do, let's just say in the next 30 to 90 days to overcome challenges and, and, and survive and thrive during this difficult time. So let's start with Rena. Go ahead, Rena. Go to sba.gov and in the menu, it'll say find local assistance and see which one is the best match for you and shop around. If you don't get a quick response from one women's business center, for example, so there, there's all these different types of centers. You're going to see a big menu. Don't get overwhelmed. Try to just choose one. Start with, you know, you can start, of course, I'm going to plug the women's business centers, which, by the way, we help men as well. Go to the small business development centers. If you don't get quick responses from one, keep shopping around until you get a response. And that's the first low-hanging fruit that I would highly recommend. And start connecting and start getting those free resources, which, I, as I said, I know we're giving everything for free during COVID. Normally, we charge a little bit, a little bit, but because we got this grant, it's free. And I'm really pleased that the SBA forced us to make it free because it took that agony of decision of what do we do off of our hands. I don't know if the other SBA organizations are doing the same, but that's the, the quickest thing that you can do. Thank you. Okay, Reva? So um, as doom and gloomy as this all seems, you have to uh, find something that makes you have hope, right? Whether, whether you're going to listen to music that uplifts you, whether it's a TV program, a movie, whatever it is, take some time every day to to be reminded of the positivity in the world, to be reminded that is doom and gloom as it looks that somewhere out there, there is, there is a bright light and, and we just need to work hard to get to that bright light and take the time now to prepare. I think the problem with this is it caught so many small business owners, they didn't have, like Brian said, there was no plan B. They didn't have a contingency plan. You, so develop one. What if, what, like Brian said, it, but you can tell Brian and I talk a lot because I now start to sound <laughs> like him. But ask yourself, what if, 
What if this doesn't get better in six months? What if it gets better in a year? What am I going to do? Put your plans in place now to be prepared for that. Start, um, you know, save your cash. That's absolutely right. You don't need a new computer. The computer you bought last year or two years ago is perfectly fine. So do what you can do to make it okay. And I have to say last week in, in addition to all the free resources from the government, there's a lot of corporations that have stepped up. So I, I was interviewing the head of Bank of America Small Business um, last week, and th th a lot of them find themselves in the same position as we are. They're stuck at home with kids, you know, trying to manage everything. And she said something really valuable. She said, just don't forget you. Step away from your business, step away from your family, 10 minutes a day and just take care of your brain, like re nourish yourself. And I think that's really good advice. Sounds good. Brian. All right. Prop time. So I have my pen and my, and my pad and my pen and I wrote accountable accountability in the next 30 days. So let's, let's give you a couple extra days, September 30th. Where do you want your business to be? Picture it, write it down, and then write down every obstacle and opportunity that are going to hit your business between now and September 30th, and how will you respond? All right, this is, this is actually the, going to be the ugliest month because the stimulus program for unemployment has run out. Um, I think a lot of landlords are going to start looking to evict some tenants and some businesses, you know, and I think this is part of the next normal. Okay, this is when it starts to get a little bit ugly. And all of a sudden, you know, schools, they're not going back to school or they're going back to school. So a lot of things are going to happen in the next 30 days. What's your plan for your business? Play the what if game. First, write down where you want to be by the end of it. And maybe that's a revenue number or that is um, maybe a number of new accounts that you want to have. It's some sort of specific goal and say, this is how I'm going to get there. But you can, it's, we're still, again, in uncharted territory. So slow and steady wins the race here. Uh, to Tendai's point earlier, if you don't have to invest in equipment or something, hold on to that cash. And by the way, if your receivables are back, you know, if your net 30 is now net 60 or net 90, that needs to become your immediate focus. Yeah. Be the squeaky wheel, even if it means you get something. And mm -hmm. by the way, <clears throat> your account's payable, and you didn't hear this from me, but I'd negotiate with every creditor. And I'd say, look, things are running a little bit tight. Can I pay you a little bit less this month? Or can I extend my credit terms with you? Everything can and should be negotiated because this right now is how do I get to September 30th? That's great. Thank you, Brian. Tendai? Well, I think a lot has been covered, but I will just say I encourage small businesses to play the long game now, which means putting your goals that you're trying to see uh, your communication strategy, your digital marketing strategy, your revenue, uh, uh, retrenchment and revenue diver uh, diversification with a long game view. But at the same time, you need to take a long view for the future because we are going to be here and this pandemic is going to be with us for a while. But if you, as Brian mentioned, are slow and steady, and continually doing your 30 day solutions, which is you know, making sure that you are reassessing and reevaluating consistently and continually. And then you are also focusing what is coming down the pike. How can I address it? What if that hypothetical position, uh, take the long view with, for the future and stay diligent and be mindful and best of all, as River mentioned, take care of yourself because it's so easy to get burnt out. It's so easy to get um, shut down, fatigue, so slow and steady, long view, best option. Well, that's great. That, those are great tips. And I'll just, I'll just uh, summarize. Find resources, take advantage of them. Self-care, take care of yourself. Um, 
have a plan, be accountable, and negotiate everything. And then finally, play the long game. So those are fantastic tips. Uh, I'm really uh, thankful for those and thankful you for, for you folks coming. Uh, we're just going to have, we're not going to have time for really many questions, but let me just mention uh, at, least, at least one of them. And I think this is one that sort of, I think we can, we can answer in a hopeful way. The question is, is now a good time to start a business? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I would answer and say definitely. Like we say, make your plans today for the, for the future. So today you're starting your business with the idea that your business is going to take off. And also, even if you are in a job, you need to diversify your income. So in the event that you get furloughed or you get laid off, you have some options to fall back on. So definitely come to me, come to Rana. That's what we do best is start new businesses and grow them. And it takes time and it takes a while, but it's doable. Yes. And I think and not only go to you and Rana, but uh, Brian and Riva have a great website and a lot of resources oh, and a lot of yes. insights. So all four of you, really, all star cast, <laughs> I'm really delighted you folks came together today to share your, your, your thoughts and suggestions. It's really, really very helpful. And we look forward to sharing this with everyone. Now we're going to end as we normally do with, with some poetry or prover proverbs. So I don't know. I think Tenda, I'm going to start with you on this one and, and, uh, and just go down the list. Go ahead. <laughs> well, mine is not, well, I'm going to only uh, read uh, one uh, stanza of this poem by Edna Vincent Mel Millet. I shall die but that is all I shall do for death. I hear him leading his horse out of the stalls. I hear the clatter on the barn floor. He is in Hass. He has business in Cuba, business in the Balkans, many calls to make this morning, but I will not hold the bridle. While the, he clenches his girth and he may mount him by himself, I will not give him a leg up. Use your mask, social distance, follow everything that you've been told to do to avoid spreading or getting the pandemic. Do not give death a leg up. Thank you, Tendai. Brian? Uh, mine's uh, Admiral James Stockdale was a, a prisoner of war in the Vietnam War. And he was one of the highest ranking, he was an admiral, one of the highest ranking uh, officers to be held prisoner. And he was interviewed in a book after he returned from the war in a, in a fantastic book that everybody should read. It's called Good to Great by James Collins. And uh, Collins sought out uh, Stockdale and he asked him about his time as a prisoner of war and, and how he survived during it. And what Stockdale's response, which is so applicable for what we're going through right now, uh, it became known as the Stockdale Paradox. And everybody should read this and write it down. And I actually have it written on my whiteboard. And it says, you must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end with the discipline you need to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they may be. See, we all have faith as business owners. That's why we became business owners. We all have faith that we're going to make it through this. Not everybody has the discipline yeah. to do what is necessary to face the brutal facts in front of them. Thank you, Brian. Reva? So mine's not a poem, but mine is one of my favorite quotes. And I always, I have adapted this um, as sort of an entrepreneurial mantra. And um, when you talked about startup, it's from George Bernard Shaw. Some credit it to Robert Kennedy, but it, started with George Bernard Shaw and says some some see things as they are and say why while others dream things as that others dream things that never were and say why not and that is motivate that's how you come up with the idea why not would this work why not and approach things from that philosophy and I think it'll take you far also be the change you want to see in the world that's that's my, that's my philosophy of operation. I love it. I love it. Okay, Rena, Rena, go ahead. Close this out. 
This is a poem I heard in a TED Talk about a individual who got falsely arrested and spent a few years in prison. This is, in, this is tying in what's happening in the country with social justice, Black Lives Matter, plus what's happening with micro businesses. This guy spent a few years in prison and ultimately all it took was for, the, for the, someone in the, in the office to look and find a receipt with a timestamp that showed that he was not where they claimed he was during the time of the crime. And this is the poem. It's, it's really about how do you value time? So it's, I, I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give account if I abuse it, just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. And just now is people have time and it's so easy to just waste time and watch, you know, TV shows and stuff. And I have to say, I'm, big, I'm very guilty of it. But people, you have time now. Do all the things that everyone mentioned on the call. Be accountable. Have a plan. Just, just invest a tiny bit every day towards that goal. And you can really accomplish so much. Wonderful. Thank you. That's a great way to end. Brenda, thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone, for coming together. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please like it, leave a review, and subscribe. See you soon.